Okay, in this video, a quick look at how to set up the Korg Nano Control 2 to work with Reaper. So, if you haven't done already, go to the Korg download page and install the app for the Nano Control 2. Link is in the description. And set that up and open it and then open Reaper once you've got it, the uh, Korg Nano Control Editor installed. And you can open the Korg Nano Control Editor app and it will look something like this, which is where you can edit the controls. Okay, so to set it up on Reaper, uh, first of all, we just need to go to your preferences. So I'm going to go Command on Mac, comma, and just under Audio and MIDI Devices, just check that your Korg Nano Control is here. Right click and just make sure it's enabled for input and enabled for control messages. And do the same on the output. Right click. Make sure it's enabled and apply any changes. So what I've done with the Nano Control I've got here is I've just set up the first fader. So there's a bank of eight faders, right? So I've set up the first fader just to control volume on the uh, selected track. So you can see that on Reaper it's connected. So I can control the volume. I can control the pan on the selected track. So I come down to this one, it will control the pan on this one, it will control the volume on this one. I just find that's really, really handy. I rather than have, you know, track track one on the controller to do track one on Reaper, etc., up to eight, and then where do you go after that? I don't know. Anyway, so I've also done solo mute and uh, record arm buttons um, again for the selected track, and then I've done all the transport and I've set up uh, markers so you can put a marker in put it into cycle mode and um, go through your tracks. Uh, I find that really useful to be able to do that off the controller. So to do all of that, you have to do it on the Reaper side and you have to do it some of it on the Nano Control side. So in Reaper, let's do the track volume, this one. So I'm going to set the first fader up on the Nano Control to change the volume of the selected track. So I'm going to go to Reaper Actions, show the action list. And I'm going to type in to find this track control, no track volume, and then select. And here it is here. Set volume for selected tracks. And I've got that. I've got two controllers doing this. I've got already got my Nano Control on CC1, and my keyboard is also doing the volume. Can also do the volume on CC7. So if I was wanting to set that up, I would let's just delete that one from the Nano Control. So all I need to do is to go add, and then I'm going to move that first fader on the Nano Control, and there it is. It's picked it up, MIDI channel 1, CC1, and I can OK that. And now I've got control of the volume. And you can do the same for the pan on the selected track. That all works really easily. Now if you look at the Korg editor, you can see if we highlight the fader here, this is the fader 1, it is operating on CC1 and it's enabled. So you need to make sure that your fader is enabled. You can see that my four, five, six, seven, eight here are not enabled, so they wouldn't, they would, you wouldn't get any effect. So make sure that's on CC1 and enabled. And if you have to make changes, you need to write that as a communication. So you just need to go to the top menu here, communication, and write scene data. Otherwise, it won't make any difference but I haven't made any changes. I'm going to make some in a minute. So let's do the mute and the solo buttons because that's slightly different. So to do that, I'm going to come and find the action on Reaper I want, which is mute. Let's find, we want to mute the selected track. Okay, so here it is, set mute for selected tracks and I've got it already set up on the Nano Control CC48. Now if you go to Nano Control, you can see there it is. The middle button is the mute one and it's CC48. Let's highlight that. And it says Control Change. And then the important bit here is the button behavior. If you have that set to momentary, and I'll need to just write that scene data to show the change. Now when you press the mute button on the Nano, it mutes the track, but only whilst you hold it down. So it doesn't latch. Now you might want that, you might want that on a solar button, depends how you work, but I wanted it to latch. So we'll change this to toggle. You need to write that scene data because you've made changes. And now when you hit mute, it 
it latches and the track is muted and we can just press it again to unmute it and you can do the same for the so solo button there and we can do the same for the record enable as well and then the transport controls are all pretty self-explanatory just look for the action you want and set it up just remember that when you've made changes on your Korg controller so there's uh, CC32 for the solo, CC48, which we already did, CC64, I've got set up to do the uh, record enable. If you make changes, you need to go to communication, write scene data, otherwise it won't make any difference. And if you want the buttons to actually latch, then put them to toggle. If you just want to hold them down to affect them, then put it to momentary. And if you want to set up all the changes you make on your Korg software here, if you want to save that as a sort of snapshot then go to file and save and put it somewhere and then you can have different setups for different sort of uh, production sessions okay so that's using the nano control by korg with reaper thanks for watching